What if I told you that a mysterious person created a new form of money that no government controls, no bank can manipulate, and anyone in the world can use? This is Bitcoin, but to understand why it's revolutionary, we need to start at the beginning of humanity's relationship with money itself. Throughout human history, our ancestors faced a fundamental challenge, how to trade and store value. Early civilizations experimented with various forms of money, each marking a step in our economic evolution. Mesopotamian societies used barley and silver, Pacific Islanders traded giant limestone disks, and African kingdoms valued glass beads and cowrie shells. As civilizations grew more complex, they needed more sophisticated forms of money. Gold and silver emerged as the dominant forms of currency across cultures for several compelling reasons. Gold proved to be naturally scarce, requiring significant effort and resources to mine. Its durability meant it could be passed down through generations without degrading. Anyone could verify its authenticity through weight and basic tests. Perhaps most importantly, gold could be divided into precise amounts and was portable enough to facilitate trade across vast distances. The rise of banking transformed how we used gold. Rather than carrying heavy metals, merchants began storing their gold with goldsmiths who issued paper receipts. These receipts became the first paper money, more convenient than gold, but still backed by real metal in vaults. This system worked well until governments began printing more receipts than they had gold to back them. The 20th century marked a dramatic shift in money's evolution. In 1971, President Nixon ended the gold standard, severing the final link between physical gold and government money. This gave birth to our modern financial system, where central banks can create money through monetary policy. While this flexibility helped governments manage economic crises, it also meant no hard limit existed on money creation. The 2008 financial crisis exposed the vulnerabilities of our modern monetary system. As governments printed trillions to bail out banks, many questioned whether too much power was concentrated in the hands of financial institutions. On October 31, 2008, amidst this turmoil, someone using the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Nakamoto's paper proposed something revolutionary, a form of digital money that would work like gold but exist entirely online. It would be scarce like gold, divisible like dollars, instantly transferable like email, and secure like cryptography. Most importantly, it would operate without any central authority. No government, no bank, no company in control. The timing was perfect. Trust in financial institutions had eroded, technology had advanced enough to make digital currency possible, and people were ready for an alternative to traditional money. On January 3rd, 2009, the first Bitcoin block was mined, marking the birth of both a new currency and a new technology. To truly understand Bitcoin, we need to distinguish between two interrelated concepts, the Bitcoin network and Bitcoin the currency. Think of how email works. There's the email system itself, SMTP protocol, servers, software, and the actual emails we send through it. Similarly, Bitcoin operates on two levels. The Bitcoin network, written with a capital B, is a vast system of computers running specialized software. These computers work together to maintain a shared record of all Bitcoin transactions ever made. It's like a global accounting system that anyone can join, but no one can control. The network operates 24-7, processing transactions, verifying them, and adding them to the permanent record called the blockchain. Let's dive deeper into how Bitcoin actually works. At its core, Bitcoin is a revolutionary solution to a complex computer science problem how to create digital scarcity without a central authority. Previous attempts at digital currency failed because digital files can be easily copied. Imagine if you could copy-paste dollar bills. Bitcoin solved this through a clever combination of cryptography, game theory, and networking. The Bitcoin network maintains a shared ledger called the blockchain. Think of this as a giant spreadsheet showing who owns how much Bitcoin. Every computer on the network has a copy of this spreadsheet and follows strict rules to keep all copies in sync. 
When you send Bitcoin, you're broadcasting a message to the network saying, I want to move X Bitcoin from my address to another address. This message is signed with your private key, a secret code that proves you have the right to spend those coins. The network's computers verify your signature and check that you actually have the Bitcoin you're trying to spend. Special computers called miners then compete to package your transaction, along with others, into blocks. This competition involves solving complex mathematical puzzles that require significant computing power. The first miner to solve the puzzle gets to add their block to the blockchain and receives newly created Bitcoin as a reward. This process, called proof of work, makes it extremely expensive to try to tamper with the transaction history. The end result is a system where transactions are permanent and unchangeable once confirmed. No one can spend the same Bitcoin twice, solving the double spend problem. Everyone can verify all transactions independently. The system remains secure as long as no single entity controls more than 50% of the mining power. One of Bitcoin's most revolutionary features is its monetary policy, which is written into its code and virtually impossible to change. Unlike government currencies, which can be created at will, Bitcoin has a fixed and predictable supply schedule. The total supply of Bitcoin is capped at 21 million coins. New Bitcoins are created through mining, with miners receiving a reward for each block they add to the blockchain. This reward started at 50 Bitcoin per block and halves every 210,000 blocks, approximately every four years. The first halving occurred in 2012, reducing the reward to 25 Bitcoin. The second halving in 2016 brought it to 12.5, and the third in 2020 reduced it to 6.25 Bitcoin per block. This halving schedule creates a predictable inflation rate that gradually approaches zero. As of 2024, about 19 million Bitcoin have been mined, with the remaining 2 million scheduled to be released gradually until approximately the year 2140. Once all 21 million Bitcoin are mined, no more will ever be created. This scarcity model plays a crucial role in Bitcoin's value proposition. Like gold, Bitcoin cannot be created arbitrarily. It must be mined through real-world effort and expenditure of resources. Unlike gold, however, we know exactly how many Bitcoin exist and will ever exist, making it the first truly scarce digital asset in history. In the modern digital age, Bitcoin represents something unprecedented, digital gold. It combines the best properties of precious metals with the advantages of digital technology. Like gold, Bitcoin is scarce, durable, and resistant to censorship. But it also has unique properties that make it superior to physical gold in many ways. Bitcoin can be transferred instantly across the globe without relying on intermediaries. A transaction worth billions can be sent as easily as one worth a few dollars. Bitcoin can be stored without physical space requirements and secured with nothing more than a sequence of words, called a seed phrase. It can be divided into minute fractions. Each Bitcoin contains 100 million Satoshis, making it practical for both large and tiny transactions. Perhaps most importantly, Bitcoin is truly decentralized. No government can seize it through force alone. No central bank can inflate its supply. No company can control its network. This makes Bitcoin uniquely positioned as a store of value for the digital age, a way for individuals to preserve wealth outside the traditional financial system. Bitcoin has already transformed how we think about money and value. It's demonstrated that money can work without government backing, that transactions can occur without banks, and that communities can create and maintain their own financial networks. Looking ahead, Bitcoin's role in the global economy continues to evolve. Some see it primarily as a store of value, digital gold for the internet age. Others envision it becoming a global currency, especially with technologies like the Lightning Network enabling faster, cheaper transactions. Still others value it as an insurance policy against monetary instability or government overreach. As traditional financial systems grapple with challenges like inflation, negative interest rates, and financial exclusion, Bitcoin offers an alternative. 
Whether it ultimately becomes global money, remains digital gold, or evolves into something we haven't yet imagined, Bitcoin has permanently changed the conversation about what money can be. Bitcoin represents more than just a new form of money. It's a technological breakthrough that enables human beings to coordinate economically in new ways. Just as the internet democratized information, Bitcoin democratizes the basic human right to store and transfer value. In a world of increasing digital connectivity and financial uncertainty, Bitcoin offers a powerful tool for individual financial sovereignty. If you found this exploration of Bitcoin fascinating, hit subscribe to join us for more deep dives into the future of money, technology, and human coordination. Share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. And don't forget to get money by income.